Hello, Walt. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Chuck. Ready to shoot the opening, but where's your bike kit? This is my outfit for the opening. I've got an idea for a new opening for our show. We've got to class this thing up a little bit. This is the latest in 1960s cool cat attire, shark skin. But for a bicycle show, shark skin? We're going to start with a theme song. A theme song? That sounds good. What's the theme song? Allow me to demonstrate, pal. Bring down the lights. Cue the orchestra. We don't have an orchestra. That summer wind came biking in from across the sea. It lingered there, warmth in wait, the wait, air. Wait, wait a minute, Chuck. So won't you? Those aren't the words to that song. Those aren't the words to Summer Wind. No. Frank Sinatra wrote Summer Wind. Take it up with him, not oh, me. It wasn't Frank Sinatra. It was Johnny Mercer who wrote that song. Well, then take it up with Johnny Mercer. He wrote the words. Yeah, but not those words, Chuck. You just told me Johnny Mercer That's wrote those. That's not what I said, Chuck. Okay, cut. All right, let, let's try something different then. If, if, we're not, if Summer Wind won't work, I got an idea. Bear with me here a moment, Walt. Can you hold this for me? Thank you. Can adapt to any situation. I'm ready to go here. And what is this new outfit that you've got now, Chuck? Allow me to demonstrate. Biking in the USA. I don't we think so, Chuck. I really don't think so. Okay, cut. All right, Walt. We'll okay, get, come on. We'll get Let's go figure out something else. All right. Oh, wait, I got an idea. What's the idea now? Biking 925, crazy if you I am. can't see Biking you dressed as Dolly Parton. Cut, cut. Hi, welcome to Bike On, on CCP-TV, the Emmy-nominated educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. Bike On is a program about bicycling and bicycle-related issues in and around Philadelphia. I'm Walt Johnson, and this is my co-host, Chuck Herbert. Chuck has been teaching computer science at Community College of Philadelphia for more than 30 years. He's been a curriculum coordinator, department chair, and assistant dean. He's a board member of the Bicycle Club of Philadelphia and currently serves as the club's vice president. He's also the chair for this year's Scenic Schuylkill Century, the club's annual one day, 100 mile ride held every September. Thanks, Walt. Walt is a professor emeritus of the college, having taught data processing and computer information systems. He's also a retired systems engineer for IBM. He's a native Philadelphian, but he's worked with IBM customers all around the world throughout the United States and in China. Like many of us, Walt rode bikes as a child, then returned to cycling later in life as an adult. In 1976, he rode across the United States from Oregon to Virginia as part of Bike Centennial, which grew to become Adventure Cycling Association that we have today. He's been seen around Philadelphia over the years on his classic Peugeot bicycle, his Bill Boston custom bike, his Brompton folding bike, his Cannondale tandem, and his current favorite, his Cannondale road bike. Today's program is about the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia. Both Chuck and I are members of the coalition, which is an advocacy and action group working to make cycling more safe and more fun for people throughout the Philadelphia region. Since 1972, the coalition has been working with governments, community groups, and the private sector to influence public policy and implement a wide range of bicycle-related projects throughout the area. With us today are Randy Labasso, the Bicycle Coalition's Communication Manager, and Wafia Murray, the Coalition's Educational Program Manager and Safe Routes Philly Coordinator. They're here to talk with us about the work of the Coalition.
Before we start, let me take you back a few years to the early 1970s. There was no way to take a bike from Philadelphia to Camden. You couldn't walk across the bridge. You couldn't take your bike on the train. If you wanted to go from Philadelphia to Camden with a bike, you had to hire somebody to take you across the bridge in their car. There were no bikes allowed on most of the SEPTA vehicles. And the ones that did allow bikes required you to buy a permit from SEPTA, an annual permit. You had to pay the fee every year, and you had to go to the SEPTA offices in person with your bike to buy the permit. Those are just a few of the things cyclists had to deal with 40 years ago in the dark days of cycling in Philadelphia. And the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia has made a big difference. They've changed those things and more. Let's just take a look at a short list. They're responsible for bike access in the Ben Franklin Bridge, for bikes being allowed on SEPTA trains and on PATCO trains crossing from Philadelphia into New Jersey. There are many projects around the city to improve cycling that were funded by grants that the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia is responsible for. A lot of the trails we see in the area were pioneered by the Bicycle Coalition of Philadelphia working with other groups. With us today is Randy Labasso, Communications Manager of the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia. We're going to talk about the Bicycle Coalition of Philadelphia's work these days and some of the things they've been up to in recent years. Hi, Randy. Welcome hey. to our show. Thanks for having me, guys. Hi, Randy. Yeah. So uh, tell us, what, what do you do with the Bicycle Coalition? So I'm the communications manager, and that encompasses a lot of things. Mostly, um, I'm responsible for all communications that go out to the public, That things we do, um, things we're responsible for, things that we are trying to do. And, um, and so I, I craft that, and I put it together, and I sort of send it out there. Sometimes, um, you know, if we are in the media, if uh, someone's writing about a project we're working on, I will talk to those people as well, or I will um, get them in touch with the right person at the coalition. Uh, we have a lot of experts that do different things at the coalition. I will make sure that happens. Um, I also manage all our um, communication with our members. We have thousands of members around the greater Philadelphia region, and uh, I send them their newsletters. I send them their emails. Uh, I make sure that they understand everything we're doing and invite them to uh, different events that we have going on. And I understand you also teach at the Community College of Philadelphia. I do. I've been doing that actually longer than uh, I've been at the coalition. I've been at the I've been at CCP for about six years. Um, I've taught English 102. I teach uh, mass media. I teach intercultural communications. And I am the faculty advisor to the school paper. Oh. which I am uh, very proud of. They, I'm just going to give a shout out here, why not? Uh, they just won six Keystone Press Awards wow. for uh, two-year colleges around the state of Pennsylvania, and I'm very proud of them. They're really a great group of kids. That's almost as many awards <laughs> as our television station. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, you don't teach any bicycling classes, do you? Uh, I don't personally, but we do have bicycling classes at the coalition. At the that, coalition. Uh, yeah, well, we'll have to we talk to Dr. Generals about having some at the college. I think that would be great. Yeah. Who else is on the staff at the Bicycle Coalition? Um, we have about 20 people, um, full-time and part-time uh, people. We have uh, people who do our education. Um, Wafia Murray, who you'll be speaking with later, she mm -hmm. does our Safe Routes program. We have um, something called the uh, Cadence Youth Cycling Program, which is a... Um, it's a youth program that teaches, uh, it will basically, I would say, more fosters um, leadership skills through the sport of cycling. Uh, we work with uh, eight schools in um, North and West Philadelphia. Um, we, of course, have a big policy team. So we do a lot of work with uh, City Hall, with the state government. And um, our policy team sort of does the research. We d I, I actually am technically mostly part of the policy team. Uh, we do the research, we do the communication, we do um, the uh, sort of lobbying efforts within City Hall. Um, so we have someone who works in City Hall every day talking with uh, representatives to um, sort of uh, try to push forward our agenda, um, which, uh, which we can talk about later as well. Sure. Um, and yeah, so those are the main uh, big parts of what we're doing. And who's in charge of the Bicycle Coalition these days? I understand you have a new director. We do. Um, Sarah Clark Stewart, who has been with the coalition for about 10 years, um, was deputy, well, she was on the board, and now then she was the deputy director. And recently, our former executive director moved on, uh, Alex Doty. He moved to the uh, 
the League of American Bicyclists in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., which is a uh, national organization. Um, and after a few months as the interim director, Sarah took over, and uh, she is now our executive director, and it's, uh, it's, she is a, a great boss. <laughs> I'm not just saying that for, uh, for brownie points. Now, what are some of the projects that the Bicycle Coalition has been involved in recently, and some of the things that you're working on as we go forward? So, uh, big things that we've, we've been involved in uh, lately that, um, that people can see, like right in front of them, is uh, one of the, the um, Schuylkill River Boardwalk, which opened in um, the fall of 2014. So, mm -hmm. uh, our uh, now executive director, Sarah, she, got that, she helped get that process started by, um, by working on some of the grants that went, went into uh, getting that created. So, mm -hmm. the Schuylkill River Boardwalk goes um, from the Schuylkill River Trail uh, all the way to the South Street Bridge. And eventually, we'll, uh, you know, knock on wood, but eventually we'll go all the way to Southwest Philadelphia around near uh, Bartram's Garden. So we're really excited for that. Um, it has uh, really become an icon of the city. If you watch, uh, you know, Monday Night mm -hmm. Football and the Eagles are playing nationally televised games, the one thing they always show is the Schuylkill River Boardwalk. It is really um, just an amazing uh, trail in the city. So you're talking about the part of the bike trail that go actually goes out over the water. Exactly. And then it yep. connects to the South Street Bridge. Yep. And what other projects have you been working on? Other things that involve trails I've heard about. Yeah, a lot of, lot of trail work. Um, the, uh, the Delaware region, Delaware, Delaware Valley region has just been, is, has a great trail system. We have about 400 miles of trails at this mm. point. Um, and uh, the proposed trail system, which is called the circuit, will eventually be 750 miles. So basically the idea there is that you can, at, at some point uh, in the future, uh, you will be able to walk outside your door, you can go north, south, east, or west, and be on a trail and be riding all day. So that's our goal for the trail system there. In addition to the trails, what about people riding bikes on the streets of Philadelphia? You guys do yep. a lot with making that ride safer. Yeah, so that has been um, probably the most difficult job that we've been doing um, because uh, getting, I can go into the nuts and bolts of it, but the, the short story is that it's difficult getting bike lanes on streets in Philadelphia because of parking regulations, because of uh, the way that the laws are set up. But since 1995, we have um, encouraged and advocated for what has eventually become more than 430 miles of bike lanes. Wow. They're not all perfect. You know, they, some of them are, um, some, some of them have been faded a little bit, uh, but they have been installed and they are part of the, uh, just the bloodline of the city at this point. One of the newest ones I, I recognize is on Walnut Street and it's on the left side of the street mm -hmm. as opposed to the right side. Mm -hmm. And when it was done, they reduced Walnut Street from three lanes of traffic to two and right. a bike lane. Do you know if any of that has been working on for uh, Chestnut Street? So there are plans for Chestnut Street. So what I, what, I can, what I can say easily is that there are a lot of plans for a lot of streets. Um, with, uh, with the Walnut Street, when you have a lane reduction, that has to go through city council. Of course. Yeah. Um, so. So something like that, um, that was okayed. Uh, the Spruce and Pine lanes, those, mm -hmm. those are two of the most used lanes in the city. Those, um, those were put forth and those have actually reduced crashes by 24% on those streets, wow. um, which is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's really about safety when it comes to bike mm -hmm. lanes. Um, but yeah, the, the, the answer to your original question is that there are plans for a bike lane on Chestnut Street, and that bike lane will hopefully be a bike lane with physical protection between traffic and bikes when it is installed. So you're talking about a bike lane that's separated by a few feet from the road traffic, from mm -hmm. the car traffic. Yeah, with a barrier in between. With a barrier? Yeah. So it's not just painted, there's gonna be a physical barrier. Exactly. Oh wow, that sounds pretty oh, that good. Does. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. seen that in, in Denmark, I think, but never seen it other, yep. in any other place. Yeah. So. Uh, more and more cities have actually been introducing uh, bike lanes with a physical barrier between, uh, between the lane and uh, traffic. Um, yeah, in Denmark, I actually just got back from Denmark mm. um, and it was incredible and mm -hmm. there are protected bike lanes everywhere. Yes. But you're actually seeing these protected bike lanes um, in now in Chicago, of course in Portland because Portland, mm -hmm. Oregon is Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, 
New York City is starting to install protected bike lanes. Uh, Pittsburgh now has protected bike mm -hmm. lanes. So, unfor I mean, that's a great thing for those cities, but unfortunately, we are one of the last major cities um, in the United States, you could argue in the world, uh, without protected bike lanes. Um, but that's changing. That is hopefully changing. Our, um, our mayor, our new mayor, Jim Kenney, uh, wrote in one of his documents that he uh, plans to uh, get 30 miles of physically protected bike lanes within the next five years. Wow, that's pretty which, good. Uh, which is... How will that affect parking, or do you know? So that will depend. Um, so f there are some... We, we actually, um, our research director, John Boyle, he put together a map for the administration that would have that would show where um, very easy protected bike lanes could go in without having to really do very much. So, if a bike lane is between the parking lane and traffic, of course, it's going to be very difficult to put in a bi protected bike lane. You're going to have to move over the, uh, the the parked cars. However, on some streets, like in Center City, like 13th Street. Um, if you've ever ridden between, um, I think it's South Street and um, it's almost up to Spring Garden, there is what's called a buffered bike lane, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that which is a 10-foot lane with a um, painted buffer in between. Putting uh, plastic bollards on 13th Street is not would probably not be too difficult to do, and that is a no-stopping zone, so cars aren't allowed to park there at any time. Uh, you still see it happen because there's. Mm -hmm there's not a, uh, an easy way to stop them from doing it. Um, but like a street like that would be pr probably pretty easy to do. Other streets with standard bike lanes um, in which uh, there is no buffer, you could still um, raise the bike lane or put some kind of bollard in between traffic um, as long as there's no parking on the other side. Now, what we, we got a promise from um, Councilman Bobby Heenan, who represents the 6th District in Northeast Philadelphia, he's, a, he's very interested in pr new protected bike lanes for his district. So mm -hmm. uh, at part of the um, 2015 paving budget uh, included, sorry, not the paving budget, the paving plan included a protected bike lane on Ryan Avenue in uh, mm -hmm. Northeast Philadelphia. Um, so it's like in, in near Mayfair, around mm -hmm. there. Um, so it didn't... Uh, didn't actually end up happening. There were a few problems. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about the, uh, the budget problems at the state and the state yes. government. Um, so it didn't actually happen, but it, we do ha it is part of the paving plan and we do hope to see it at some point. But that, that, la that lane a in itself will actually use parked cars to protect the bicyclist. So that will literally be just, it instead of curb um, parking bike lane, it'll be curb bike lane parking. And that's a pretty simple way to get that done. How do, how do the parked cars then cross the bike lane? They don't. There is a... Uh, you said curb mm -hmm. bike lane parking. Right. Right. So the bike lane is closest to the sidewalk. Yeah. And they park... Oh, you're going the from the inside out. out. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going from the outside in. So, th yeah, that's one way that a lot of cities have done it. Chicago has a lot of uh, car-protected bike lanes. Okay. Now, so I understand that... Um, it's not just Philadelphia, any large city. You plan to do, make a change in the streets. You're mm -hmm. paving, whether it's ch putting in a crosswalk, putting in a bike lane, whatever, and that gets approved. Then they have the plan for implementation. Then they actually get around to implementation. And you have paving crews and so on. In Philadelphia, they work from April to November. Mm -hmm. And if anything happens, um, if there's a flood that wipes out a street, that slows them down. Mm -hmm. So you probably are more familiar with this than I am, but I would, it's not, let's put in a bike lane and next week it's done. It, it's a right. long process, isn't it? It is. Uh, so that was one of the, I, I've been at the coalition for about a year and a half, and um, I had no idea how long or expensive the process was before I got there. And I'll put it this way, I was a reporter, and I wrote a lot about biking in the city, and I, you know, I just, I, it was hard for me to put all that together, I guess, as a reporter. But now that I'm in the, on the inside, so to speak, um, yeah, it's a very, very difficult um, very difficult process. Uh, the city itself, as of uh, last year, uh, I haven't seen the numbers this year yet, but last year the city still had a 900-mile paving backlog. Wow. So, you know, and that's, that is, that's a problem, but it's also a, it's a symptom of the, of the problem with, uh, with money in Philadelphia. You know, right. Philadelphia is not an incredibly rich city. You know, we, every time you hear about these uh, 
some things happening, say, in Seattle or San Francisco, well, okay, fine, but Philadelphia is not those places. So we, you know, we're, we're a little different, and um, the coalition is doing what it can with those circumstances to try to make biking uh, better and safer for everybody. I think, and from my viewpoint, one of the nice things about what the Bike Coalition does is you guys are involved at the early stages. Mm -hmm. So when they're planning the new streets, you're involved even before the plans are written up. Yep. So it's not somebody coming along and saying, hey, I heard they're going to mm -hmm. pave my street next week. Can they put in a bike lane? Right. They're, they're like three years behind by the time <laughs> they start doing the paving. Yeah, exactly. You guys get in at the early stage. Ryan Evan, it's a good example. Yeah. And, and I guess you work closely with councilmen and, and councilwomen in their own districts. Mm -hmm. So you have connections with the districts, the people in the districts themselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Councilman Bobby Heenan, uh, relatively new councilman, but you know he's a cyclist himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he cycles with his family. Um, councilman and Johnson also has yep. done some riding. Yeah, Councilman Johnson. Um, councilwoman Bass actually last year worked with us on a bill that um, that uh, it was a bill that was. And this is also maybe too much information, but it was a bill that was le that was made legal um, through the state um, highway bill, the transportation bill in uh, 2013, and it allowed uh, local municipalities to add a certain amount of money onto car registrations to then go toward infrastructure. So, uh, vehicle registration now in Philadelphia is uh, five dollars more than it was before. And that $5, considering all the vehicles in Philadelphia, will add about $3.5 million that will go just toward the paving budget. Each year. Each year. So, I mean, it's, a, it's somewhat of a drop in the bucket compared to how much money this stuff really costs. But it's little things like that, if we can do them with everyone over time, that we feel is really um, is going to make the biggest difference for do Philadelphia. You, it has any of the money toward that the increases in property taxes going towards that budget? Um, I don't believe so, but that's not something that I there, can... There were no increases in property taxes. Well, well they, <laughs> they've, they've changed the, the amount of money that... Right, they changed the it, formula. Yeah, the formula. Well, not so much the formula, but they went and re-evaluated so properties. The reassessment? Reassessment. Sure, yeah, yeah. Mine was reassessed up like 80% <laughs> last year. So I'm f feeling really vulnerable in that state. Stay with us, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Randy Labasso about the work of the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia. The Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia has been dealing with other organizations to reduce traffic-related deaths, Randy. Tell us what your organization is doing about that. So w there's a program called Vision Zero, which was originated in Sweden in 1997. And the goal of it is to eliminate all traffic deaths within a given area. The Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia has been working with some other groups to try to make this happen in the Philadelphia region. Um, currently, about 100 people die in traffic-related deaths each year in Philadelphia. And we feel that this is way too many. Um, of them, about a third are uh, pedestrians and that is, uh, is shouldn't be scary to walk across the street. So um, we've been working with some other organizations and we've been working with the uh, Philadelphia City Council and with uh, the mayoral administration to enact a Vision Zero policy in Philadelphia. So basically that is a series of different um, of of different bills and different uh, tactics you can use to get this done. One of them is um, road diets. So uh, if you enact, if you change the streets so you eliminate some um, traffic lanes, uh, then you are more likely to see uh, organized traffic and slower traffic. Um, the next way we do it, we were thinking um, other, some other cities have used speed cameras. Speed cameras would um, make sure that uh, cars are going slowly. If you look at a red light camera, I don't know if anyone here has ever driven through a uh, red light with <laughs> a camera, but when you get that ticket in the mail a couple weeks later, you don't ever do it again. Um, the other thing is uh, what we've already talked about, better infrastructure, uh, more protected bike lanes for bicyclists. Protected bike lanes have actually been proven to, um, to reduce traffic deaths among all people, um, no matter what kind of uh, transportation you're using. Um, because better bike lanes mean more bicyclists, and when there are more bicyclists on the road, people in cars are m more likely to see them. 
And then the last thing, uh, which we've already been promised mm -hmm. from the mayoral administration, is a complete streets office um, within the city of Philadelphia that would deal with all of these things under one roof, that we could, we and other organizations like Feet First Philadelphia, like AAA, who we actually work with, um, could actually go to and speak with and uh, organize and plan with. Thank you, Randy. Chuck has a series of questions about bicycling and bicycle-related issues that he likes to ask each of our guests on Bike On. Here's Chuck asking Randy our Bike On questions. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, number one, what is your favorite bike? My favorite bike is my bike. Um, it is a single speed Americano. Um, I bought it uh, six years ago. I use it every single day to get to and from work. Uh, on weekends, I use it to bike wherever I feel like going. I use the Schuylkill River Trail to get to Maniunk. Sometimes I even take it all the way to, uh, to Valley Forge, uh, but it's, it goes everywhere and it has never, uh, never done me any wrong. So it's your commuter bike and your road bike all in exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. And it's a single speed. Yes. Wow, we're gonna have to take a look at that one. <laughs> what is your favorite biking event? Do you have one you particularly like? Well, uh, when I was younger, uh, um, like early 20s, it was the Maniunk bike, I called it the Maniunk bike race. I know it's not called that, but right. I lived in Maniunk and it was a lot of fun. Um, now it is uh, Bike to Work Day because uh, we, the Bicycle Coalition organizes that and it's something that you just meet every single cyclist that uses uh, the center city lanes to get to work and some in West Philly too, uh, depending on where we are. Um, and it's great meeting people who like you every morning, getting on their bike, going to work, getting on their bike at the end of the day and going home and using that as their primary transportation. So when you lived in Maniunk, did you see people going up the wall? I did. Yeah, that was always, um, I just, I don't know what I ever thought of them doing that. I just thought they were crazy. <laughs> and have you gone up the wall in your single speed? I have not, <laughs> and I have not <laughs> attempted it either. Well, when, the, when it's not blocked off for the bike race, it's a pretty busy street. It's kind of yeah, tough. Yeah, so. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't even. Tell us about one of the best experiences you've had on a bike. <sighs> wow. Um, you know, I guess, uh, there's no single experience I would point to, but uh, in the summer on weekends, um, I love just uh, taking my bike and getting on the Schuylkill River Trail or the towpath in Maniunk and just going as far as I feel like going. Um, my wife and I often do that on weekends. Um, maybe stop at the Conchalk and Brewery, uh, just you know, get a snack, um, and just and come back and really just have that day to ourselves doing that. Now, does she have a single speed? She has a three speed. She has a three speed. Yeah. So it's a little bit. Right, up yeah. She's a, she's a little bit more technical than I am, I guess. Tell us about one of the worst experiences you've had on a bike. Um, again, with my wife, uh, we were on Broad Street. She got doored by oh. a car. Um, she ended up underneath another car. Luckily, oh uh, we were at a red light, and so no one was moving. Um, then we confronted the driver, not too angrily, but not very kindly either. And uh, he, of course, blamed us. He was from New Jersey. He didn't understand the rules uh, of the road. And, um, and we got into a pretty bad argument with him, but eventually calmed down. He gave us his insurance information, and everything was fine. And everyone, no one was hurt. So this is where somebody opens the door in front of an oncoming bike. Right. Yeah, well, actually, in this case, it wasn't in front. It was while we were going by, um, the door was opened, and she was hit, and gone. she went to the side. So oh, that's probably yeah. even worse. Yeah, it, w it was worse because she, she never saw it coming. She didn't have a chance to slow down by seeing the door open. It right. just hit her on the side. So. Mm. But she was fine. On in that note, <laughs> <laughs> do you know any good bicycle jokes? Nope. You don't? No. Well, we're going to have to get a bicycle joke book because none of our <laughs> guests seem to know any bicycle jokes. What bicyclists do you admire? Are there one in particular or any few bicyclists that really stand out as people you admire? Um, so I've never been a big like bike racing kind of person, um, but the in general the bicyclists I admire are uh, the people who just decide to um, that they want to change something about their life and they get on their bike in the morning and they say this is my primary mode of transportation from now on. I believe it's the best mode of transportation you can use. It's the it's the uh, best. It's the healthiest mode, mm -hmm. and it is. Um, I believe just if for Philadelphia, as flat as we are outside of Maniunk, that that area, um, 
it is just a great way to get around. So anybody who's willing to try bicycling for the first time in Good. the city. How did you get started in bicycling? <laughs> Um, well, of course, I learned as a kid. Um, like I shouldn't say of course. I did learn as a kid. Um, I took long time off. I grew up in the suburbs, and I did not really want to ride my bike on those uh, windy suburban wooded uh, roads. Um, but actually, what happened was I, um, I lost my job during the recession, and uh, I didn't really have a better way of getting around. And I, I you know, tried to kind of um, build my career back up, and biking was the cheapest way to get around, mm -hmm. and it was the fastest way to get around, and, um, and that's how it became part of my everyday life. I shouldn't say this because my wife is a professor of English, but there's a lot of English majors riding around on bikes because yep. it's the cheapest way to get around. Exactly. <laughs> do you always wear a helmet when you ride? Yes. And what do you think about other people wearing helmets? I think they should. You think they should yeah, wear a helmet? I think everyone should wear a helmet, um, but I, I don't, but I, and you know, this is a point of, point of contention amongst some bicyclists. Right. Some say they shouldn't, some say they should. Uh, I know people who have fallen off their bikes and they swear that their helmet was the reason that they weren't more injured. Um, I have fallen off my bike, I've gone over the handlebars after uh, getting, after slipping in um, on a train track, and uh, I landed on my shoulder and my head, I was fine. I got right up and I walked the bike for a few blocks, but I was <laughs> able to get back on. Um, and I believe it's because of the helmet. Because um, of the helmet. Yeah, so um, I don't believe the argument that says uh, helmets don't make you safer. They definitely do. But at the same time, Bicycle Coalition does not um, call for helmet laws because um, we believe that uh, that may deter some people from cycling. Um, well, that's that's one yeah. of the the next question I had for you was okay. about laws. Um, the the uh, National Transportation Safety Board has statistics that say 98 percent of traumatic head injuries in bicycling could be prevented from wearing a helmet. So mm -hmm. it's pretty clear cut that helmets make you safe. On the other hand, it is not so clear cut about bicycling laws. For example. Um, Bicycling laws require enforcement, and when police officers, this is what happened in Australia, when mm -hmm. the police officers are out there writing tickets and people are worried about getting a ticket and so on, it actually diminishes the number of people that are riding bikes. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, I don't know if there's clear evidence that it's, it's any safer. So what do you personally think about the bicycle laws, about bicycle helmet laws? Uh, so I'm, I also don't believe uh, that they're a good idea. However, I would... Uh, encourage everyone to use one. Right. Yeah, that's really and, just what and, it comes it, does down Does the to. Bicycle yeah. Coalition itself have a policy about this, or is it? Same policy. Same policy. Yeah. So but, but it's I a good idea yeah. to wear a helmet, mm -hmm. but there are reasons why making that a law is not necessarily a good idea. Right. And the, my, my belief in that was totally independent of my having worked at the Bicycle Coalition. Right. Um, it is based on my own research, and of course, uh, once I got there, they had read the same research, so it, we all kind of agree on that. And I think a lot of people with dented helmets would tell you that helmets <laughs> are a good idea. Right. Don't you think so, Walt? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Or cracked helmets. <laughs> I've cracked several. Yeah, Walt has a cracked helmet I saw at his house the other day. That yeah. was cracked. <laughs> that was the helmet I used. Oh, that's the one that wasn't cracked. That's the one that wasn't cracked. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. What's your favorite bicycle accessory, uh, other than a helmet? <laughs> Um, so, I actually have a small speaker that I put on my handlebars because, um, as our, the viewers hopefully know, uh, wearing headphones is illegal on a bike. Um, so, I don't, I don't ever wear headphones, but I do have a speaker and um, on my morning commute, which is about 25 minutes each way, um, I listen to podcasts on my bike. Listen to podcasts? Yeah. Not listen to the Rolling Stones or anything like that? Uh, I, I, so this is going to, I don't know how this is going to sound, but on Fridays I make an exception and I listen to music. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's like, my, it's like after learning all week, I'm like, you know, kind of a casual Friday kind of thing. And don't you record some podcasts as well? I do. The Bicycle Coalition has a podcast, um, which anybody can listen to on iTunes. And, um, and it is, we go over, I think, kind of similar things that we discussed today. And how often, how, is it like once a week? Or? It's a bi-weekly podcast for now. We so there's a new one every two weeks? Yep. We, uh, we just started it. It's, uh, we've had three episodes so far. And um, it's, been, uh, it's been a good experience. Well, that sounds yeah. pretty good. What do you usually take with you when you ride on your bike? You've got um, your speaker and your helmet, and what <laughs> right. else? Um, so I, in, you know, I ride all year. So, um, so I've, I've always got you know big jackets on. Usually, I got 
I got a little hat that goes underneath my helmet, covers my ears um, for riding in the in the in the winter. Um, and uh, since I am usually going to work, and I also work at the community college, I usually have a bag with uh, with two or three uh, jobs worth of um, of papers in it. And so, you know, I have a backpack, um, and that's basically it. So there's an English okay. teacher on a bike, mm -hmm. has papers to correct. Yes. That sounds typical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then my lunch, you know, for work and whatever else. What's the farthest you've ever ridden on a bike? Whoa. Uh, I don't know. I, I would, I mean, get, it's probably been recently, you know, on a Schuylkill River uh, trail ride. You know, I would say uh, 30, 40 miles. So you ride yeah. your bike regularly every day, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily go on long rides. Right. Some so people at the weekend only, but they do a century every Saturday or whatever. Right, right, exactly. And you're not one of those riders. No, I'm, I'm about eight miles a day, and then on weekends when it's nice, I'll try to do maybe 20 miles. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, eight miles on a single speed is like 50 miles <laughs> on a road bike. <laughs> what do you think about the materials bikes are made of? Steel, aluminum, carbon, titanium? What do you have to say about that? Um, that is actually outside my pay grade. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I don't know. I think the lighter the better. Usually, my bike is very light, but I don't really, uh, I haven't really looked into the some of that stuff. Some of the materials. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, and thanks for being on our show. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Randy. Our second guest on today's show is Wafia Murray, the Coalition's Education Program Manager and Safe Routes Philly Coordinator. Here's Wafia speaking with us about the work she does, which includes bringing cycling education programs to schools and neighborhoods throughout Philadelphia. Hi, Wafia. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So tell us a little bit about the program that you're responsible for. Yes, so the program that I run is called Safe Routes Philly. Um, it's part of the Safe Routes to School National Partnership. And we work with schools throughout Philadelphia to promote walking and biking as safe, fun, and healthy forms of transportation for Philadelphia students. So you work in the schools? Yes, so well, we're a train the trainer model. So we work with school administration. It could be teachers, parents, um, anyone in the school who wants to get involved and I'll go out and train them on certain programs or activities and then they implement them themselves. So you must do a lot of work with PE teachers for example. Yes, we do a lot of work with PE teachers. So we have a walking and biking safety curriculum um, and it goes through all the different things about walking safely and biking safely. It goes over a proper helmet fitting, um, how to um, properly fit your bike and proper hand signals and all of that awesome stuff. And what is the target age range for the children for these programs? Well, so initially, um, Safe Fruits Philly has been around since 2010, and initially we only worked with elementary schools, um, but recently we've branched out to work with middle schools and high school students as well. So we work with all ages currently. And what about in the summer? Do you have any programs, safety programs or programs for children in the summer? Yes, so in the summer we work with recreation centers or parks. We do learn to ride classes in the summer um, in Eakins Oval and we have students sign up to learn how to ride their bikes. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of stuff in the summer. So they can sign up and come down to Eakins Oval? And yes, and learn how to ride a bike. And I imagine there's information about this on the greater a uh, the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia's website. Yes, you can go to our website and they have information on all of our programs that are coming up and things that are happening, so yes. And, and the, most of these programs are free for the children? Yes. Well, well actually, sorry, the Learn to Ride class, there, there is a slight fee, um, very minimal, but most of them are free. Most of them are free. Yes. And what other kinds of safety programs or initiatives are you aware of that the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia is involved with? Um, yes, so we do a lot, especially with Safe Foods Philly. Um, so I spoke about the pedestrian and bicycle safety curriculum. We also do something called bike rodeos. And that's basically, it's a fun bicycle obstacle course. And it takes uh, students, or adults can do it as well, through different safety stations. So there's one station where we practice balancing mm -hmm. on your bike. So you gotta stay in a straight line, and you kinda wanna go as slow. So we kinda call it the turtle race, because <laughs> the object of the game is to go as slow as you can in a straight line. 
Um, we have another one where it focuses on um, proper hand signaling um, because there's a lot of things that you know people just don't know. And the more you know, the safer you are and the safer others, the safer that others are on the road. Um, so it goes over proper hand signaling. We practice maneuvering through different cones and all of that fun stuff. So it's a way of teaching people about biking safety but making it fun at the same time. Now, I've heard about this program called Vision Zero and that the yes. Bicycle Coalition's involved. Can you tell us something about this Vision Zero program? Yes, so basically Vision Zero is a policy to bring Philadelphia to zero deaths. So no crashes, no deaths at Zero all. deaths on the highway. Um, yes, and that's for not just cyclists, but for pedestrians as well. I see, and, and um, is this a local program? What kind of a program is it? So this is a national program. It's been implemented all over. Um, so well, we're getting it here in Philadelphia now. So yeah, it's a national program. And is it just the Bicycle Coalition or do you work with others? No, we work with tons of other partners. We work with the city on this. Um, AAA is a sponsor. We have a lot of different sponsors. And it's, it's, a, it's really a group effort. Um, you know, it's something that I talk about with Safe Foods Philly when I go out to schools and I talk about, you know, the importance of safety and the importance of being safe, especially when I'm encouraging students to cycle more for physical activity. I want to make sure that when I'm encouraging them to cycle on the road that I'm doing my part to make it safe as possible, which has a lot to do with, like, infrastructure. Now, one question I had was whether or not bicycle safety for children is any different than it is for adults? Are there any special things that children have to pay attention to when they're on a bike? Things uh, that parents maybe should make sure yeah. their children know about? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, I would say when um, you for biking, so it's important to remember that a lot of people don't know that when you're over the age of 12, legally by law, you are to ride in the road with, um, in the street. Instead so, of on the sidewalk. Yeah, instead of on the sidewalk. A lot of people don't know that. So some people think it's safer to bike on the sidewalk, but actually you double your chances of an incident wow. while biking on the sidewalk. Um, so yeah, making sure that you know you're staying in the road with traffic, um, you know, using bike lanes and things like that. What about helmets for children? Yes, wear a helmet. I always go to schools and I tell students, wear your helmet. The um, theory that I use is, you know, you like football, you love football. Whenever you see a football player go out on the field, do you see them go out on the field without a helmet? No, it's all about being safe. And there are a variety of helmets out there. Like this is a really cool one here. Um, you can decorate your helmet. I said you can put stickers on it, whatever you want. Just make it your own and wear it because it's always best to be safe than sorry. Well, that sounds pretty good. Isn't it also a legal requirement for children under a certain age to have a helmet? Or is it not? I think in the city, the, the cutoff is 12. The yeah, the cutoff is 12. Yeah, so, so you, if you're Up under 12, 12 years, years old, yeah, you must wear a helmet. Yeah. But That's it, what I thought. There's That's not a lot of police officers out there writing tickets for 7-year-olds, well, yeah. but they could if they, if they wanted. Yeah. They could give the parents a ticket. Yeah if but the child, so parents should know that. Usually in Philadelphia, um, bicycle riders aren't ticketed for lots of violations no, that they should be in, in some cases, I think. Yeah, especially seven-year-olds. They'll stop and warn you. No, I was saying, you know, other things other than helmet right, that's right. laws. Yeah. So the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia runs the bike rodeos. Are they at a particular location or do or, or you have them all different places? So we have them at all different places. A lot of times I go out to schools and do help the schools implement those, like in the schoolyard or in the gym or, you know, if there's a park or a rec center or whatever. Wherever there's a large space, you can make a bike rodeo happen. And the bike rodeos can be indoors. They don't have to be outdoors. Yes, they can be indoors. We do them in the um, gymnasiums a lot at school. So, yeah, as long and as you've got this a lot of space. this is something the kids really like? They love bike rodeos. They love bike rodeos so much. Like, they would do a bike rodeo every week if they could. They love them. Well, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. After our conversation with Wafia, Chuck asked her the questions he asked each of our guests. So are you ready? I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite bike? My favorite bike would have to be my bike. I have a Breezer Uptown. A Breezer Uptown? Yes. And, and what's I love that it. like? It is so fun. So I've been biking for like the last two years or so, but that's still rather new for cycling. So um, it was the best bike for me to like really get back into cycling with. Mm -hmm. um, I take it everywhere. I love my bike. Very good. What is your favorite biking event? Bike to school day. 
Bike to School Day. Yes, is my favorite biking event. Um, it's a day where schools um, basically bike. So they'll meet at a certain spot or they'll meet at school and they'll bike to school together as a group. So there'll be students and parents and staff and it's just so much fun and I love, so I just love Bike to School Day. And that happens all over the city? It's a national event actually. Oh really? So it, it's a worldwide event and we try to do it up big here in Philadelphia. So. Well that sounds good. When you ride your bike, where do you like to ride? I love to ride on the Schuylkill River Trail. Mm -hmm. um, I love Spruce and Pine bike lanes. Uh, I love the Boardwalk Extension on the Schuylkill River Trail. So those are my favorite places. And I understand that you bike to work every day. I bike to work, most yes. Most days. Most days, yes. Not very good when it's really, really cold, <laughs> but. <laughs> and when you bike to work, you use those same routes you just mentioned? Yes, I actually, I take the South Street Bridge and I take um, Spruce and Pine bike lanes, yes. Yeah, the Spruce and Pine bike lanes are pretty mm -hmm. good. They're some of the mm -hmm. best in the city. Yes. Walt talks about the Walnut Street bike lane. He likes that one yeah. a lot. Nice view there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us about the best experience you've had biking. I have to say it was the first time that I biked on the Boardwalk Extension. Um, I'm Philadelphia girl born and raised, and so it wasn't just the point of being on that cool bike path, but just seeing, oh wow, this is an awesome addition to Philadelphia as a whole. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I work for an organization that helped bring that to Philadelphia, it was like a moment for me. So that was probably my best bike moment. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. Uh, and, you, and you like the way it's out over the water. I love, I'm a big, I love water. Um, so I really enjoy that, just to sit there and just look out on it. And it's so beautiful and relaxing. And it's a place I like to take a lot of my students when we do group rides. I'm like, let's go to the boardwalk. It's so much fun and they love it too. Well, I imagine they would. Tell us about one of the worst experiences you've had biking. So the worst experience would be when I fell. Um, I was biking to work on, in the bike lane and there were two people walking in the bike lane. Don't ask me why they were walking in the bike lane, because there was a perfectly clear sidewalk there, <laughs> but they wanted to walk in the bike lane. And, you know, I rang my little bike bell and all of that. Excuse me. They didn't want to move. They probably had headphones in. Um, so I tried to go around them and my tire got caught in the trolley track. Oh. Yeah. And so I went down, but thankfully I had my helmet because I, I fell on my head and my shoulder. They both hit, so luckily I had my helmet and I was able to, you know, I was a little sore, but I was able to just get back up and continue my ride. Did you need a new helmet? I did get a new helmet. Well, I got a new one just in case. You just <laughs> never know, right. like, you know, I don't want to mm -hmm. take any chances, so. Yeah, that, I, I've had an experience of hitting a, uh, an expansion joint on one of the bridges. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing, went down immediately. It's, it's pretty tough. On that note, do you know any good bicycle jokes? I do not know any good bicycle oh, we jokes. Gotta, we gotta maybe we should create one. Like they, maybe that's something that needs to be created. You guys should create a bike joke yeah, on we'll have this to, we'll show. We'll have to do some research on Google yeah. and find some bicycle create jokes. Create a fun one. And we got to teach those people from the Bicycle Coalition. None of them seem to know any bicycle <laughs> jokes. They're all serious about bicycles. They're bicycling. all serious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are there, is there a bicyclist or a group of bicyclists whom you really admire? Yes. So at the Bicycle Coalition, we have a youth cycling team called Cadence Youth Cycling. And they are the most amazing group of students that you will ever meet. And they're just like great cyclists. They encourage me every day. Like when I see them cycling and when I see their determination, they are an inspiration to me every day. And I make sure I tell them that every time I see them. So they put a lot of effort into it. They put so much effort into it. And at such a young age, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like when I was your age, the, I put effort into watching TV and going to the <laughs> mall. And you guys are like, being cyclists and like changing so like changing so many people's idea of what cycling looks like and what cycling is and what it can be so they are a huge inspiration to me good and they're going to be healthy too oh yes they're they're in great shape i try to keep up with them <laughs> how did you get started biking i got started when i started with the bicycle coalition actually two years ago really um i was i well so i biked as a child i learned how to ride when i was a kid mm -hmm. um and i used to remember just it was so much fun biking through the city being able to bike with friends 
Um, I didn't have to worry about waiting for my mom to take me somewhere or paying for public transportation. Right. So I remember it just being that fun tool. And, you know, I got older and I kind of got away from it. And then once I started with the Bicycle Coalition, um, our education director, Megan, she was so awesome. She would take me out on bike rides and help me feel comfortable. Um, so, yeah, now I just love it. And is that, that happens, I think, with a lot of people. I think so. Isn't that, you, you had that sure. experience too, bicycled younger and then you got back into it? Yeah. I didn't bicycle from the time I was 37 until I was, 17 rather, until I was 36 and I started riding again at 36. Wow. I, I, similar with me, I, I bicycled when I was a child and then uh, before my, my father passed away about 10 or 15 years ago, he had a bike that, that my, uh, my mother gave to me when he passed away and I started riding again to get in shape. And then the last several years, I've taken it pretty seriously. Wow. And so it's, it's, um, it's you know, right. uh, I guess people my age start to think about their health. And yes. sometimes that's a reason to get back into yes. cycling. Sure. And I think what I love most about cycling is that it's one of those f activities that is a lifelong activity. Mm -hmm. I feel like once you learn how to ride a bike, you never really forget. It may right. take you a little bit to kind of get your balance back. But once you take a second, you learn it. And that's why I love teaching youth about cycling, because this is a form of physical activity and transportation that they can take with them their whole life. Right, and it's also one that's lifelong, and it's a lifelong activity that's not hard on your body. Exactly. For example, a lot of people like to play basketball, mm -hmm. and they like to do that even when they're older, but mm -hmm. your knees really take a punishment and oh, running yes. and other things. So That's exactly why I switched to, <laughs> to bicycling. I used to go and, and, and play basketball, and the knees started to hurt a little bit, mm -hmm. and I stopped getting in some of the pickup games at 36. So. <laughs> I started riding to the games, and then bicycling became the thing that I did. Oh, cool. Do you always wear a helmet when you ride? Yes. We heard about your crash. I always wear a helmet when I ride, yes. And do you think other people should always wear a helmet? Um, I, th I would say yes, people should always wear helmets. It's the safest, I d I'm all about better safe than sorry. Okay, and do you think there should be bicycle helmet laws? How do you feel about the bicycle helmet laws? I feel like that is that that should be left up to the person to decide on if they want to wear their helmets or not. So you, you're not in favor of the laws? You, no. You I'm, think everybody should wear a helmet? Yes, I think everyone should wear a helmet and I, you know, recommend that everyone wears a helmet, but I, I agree that it's something that, you know, it should be a personal choice. Right, well there's a lot of people who have the same, the same yeah. feeling that, that, that they're in favor of everybody wearing a helmet, but the law is a little bit overboard. Sometimes it, it causes a need for the police to enforce the laws and yes. there's a lot of other issues involved. Other than your helmet, what's your favorite bicycling accessory? I love my bell. You like your bell? I love my bell on my bike because, I don't, well, it's a way for if I see someone out in the street that I know, I can say, oh, ring my bell, ding, 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 hi. Um, or even, you know, when you're in the bike lane or a trail and you, pad, you see other cyclists, kind of acknowledge them like, hey, I'm cycling too, cool bike. And it's a way to, you know, get people's attention, especially on like the Schuylkill River Trail, um, where there's a, you know, you've got people cycling and right. walking and running instead of, you know, having to say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I just kind of. Ding, Ring ding, ding, yes. Especially when you get down near Boathouse Row, for example, yes. a lot of pedestrians. <laughs> yeah, a lot. So my bell is my favorite accessory. Now, when you ride your bike, mm -hmm. you have your helmet and your mm -hmm. bell. Anything else you usually take with you? My backpack. Your backpack? Yes. I've, I'm all, I always have my backpack because <laughs> I cycle to work. So I need to take, you know, all of my work stuff. And then, you know, I just never know what I may need. Like I need, you know. Some gummy bears, I need, right. <laughs> um, you know, water, all of that stuff. So I just always have my backpack. So when you ride your bike, let me get this straight. Yes. You have your helmet, your bell, your backpack with gummy bears and water. Gummy bears <laughs> and water, yes. <laughs> What's the longest bicycle ride you've ever taken? You know, I can't say. Um, usually when I take long rides, I just kind of zone out and just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I don't really check to see how far I've gone. So I can't say what my longest bike ride has been. Have you been on bike rides where you've been out for a few hours? Yes, especially when I go out with friends. Um, we, can we can just take School Curve River Trail and just go, especially um, so when the Pope was in town mm -hmm. and you know they closed all the streets oh, yeah. off and the city was bikeable. Oh my gosh, I think I rode the, my bike everywhere all day mm -hmm. that Sunday. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was, that day would be the longest bike ride I've ever had. It was the best. And the last question we have for you what do you think about the materials that bicycles are made from? Steel, aluminum, carbon, titanium, any thoughts about that? 
I have no thoughts about that <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> I have no thoughts about that. Whatsoever. This is one of the differences between the uh, city bikers and the country bikers. We find those people out there racing around on the country uh -huh. roads, and they all tell us about how great carbon fiber is. And city people are like, I just want a bike. That's <laughs> right. I just want a bike. I just want it to get me from point A to point B safely. Well, thank you. Th thank you very much, Wafia, and uh, thanks for being with us thank today. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's show. Randy and Wafia mentioned the coalition's work with the city of Philadelphia to create a new bike lane on Ryan Avenue in Northeast Philadelphia. We're happy to report that the project is complete and one of the city's first two-way protected bike lanes is now open. It's on the east side of Ryan Avenue between Lexington and Roland Avenues near Pennypack Park, Lincoln High School, and the Austin Mean Middle School. I hope you enjoyed our show today. We'd like to thank Randy Labasso and Wafia Murray from the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia for being with us today. Join us next time on Bike On, on CCPTV, the Emmy-nominated educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. Bike On is a program about bicycling in and around the city of Philadelphia. Goodbye, everybody. Uh -oh.